Most smartphones don't even have Android 12 yet and here we are talking about Android 13. That's why we call it the bleeding edge, I guess. Anyways, we now have some expected launch date and features, so let's get into it. Android 13 will be called as Tiramisu, yeah, that Tiramisu, and we are likely to see an official version maybe on the Pixel 7 that will be later on in 2022 towards the end. It will probably be between October first week or December last week, so pretty much fourth quarter. However, we may get to play around with it much sooner than we thought. That's what she said. I'm talking about developer previews. If you remember back in 2021, we got the Android 12 developer preview back in March. So it's very likely that we'll see some Android 13 previews at the same time this year as well. Google usually holds their I.O. conference every year in May, so we'll probably get to see a beta version of that in that conference too. Pretty much any Google Pixel user will be able to try them out, but be aware that they will be filled with a lot of bugs. They are previews after all. But I mean, come on, you have to try it, because that's one of the biggest perks of owning a Pixel device. Google provides their software updates for up to 3 years, so even if you're on an older device like the Pixel 4 or the 4a, you are still good to go. And the same goes for recent Samsung devices too, like the Galaxy S20 or S21 series. Right then, let's talk about the new features, at least the ones that we know of so far. We may see a small change in app notifications. Based on a discovery made by XTA developers, there seems to be a runtime permission for post notifications. It means that applications will now start asking you if they can show notifications or not. So you don't have to go into settings and disable them each time. It's unclear if they'll be immediately included in Android 13, but it would be pretty cool I guess. And speaking of per app settings, Android 13 will possibly allow you to select an individual language per app. So if you want one app to always open in one particular language, you can set it to be so. Google may make use of the translation API which is already present in Android 12 to do this. Next up we have some news about a battery management tool that Google is working on called Tear. If you think the name is weird, the management system is even weirder. Tear stands for the Android resource economy, so it's like a digital currency that your system allocates different apps when the battery life is running low. So when the battery is running low, applications will get to spend this some sort of currency to maintain the battery percentage as much as possible. And if an application runs out of this currency, it can no longer schedule any tasks. I wonder if they pay taxes though. If you're thinking all of this sounds pretty complicated, you're right. In fact, I'm not really fully expecting this to be immediately available in Android 13. But once the official version is out on the Pixel 7, we may see this soon to follow. Google is a company that's known for radically changing your software experience just with one single update. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this is included as a software update later on in 2023. Another exciting update is that Android 13 may be the first platform to have full support for Bluetooth LE. LE stands for low energy. This is a new dedicated audio protocol, so it's designed to stream wireless audio to your devices. Alongside the low energy consumption, Bluetooth LE has new features such as being able to transmit audio to multiple devices simultaneously at very low latencies. But there are some minor downsides though. To achieve this low energy consumption, the audio bitrate has to be reduced. So if you are used to listening high definition audio on great pair of headphones, then yeah, you will definitely see the difference if you enable LE. Now some of you may say that that's pretty lame, but here's the thing. Unlike what Apple tells you, Bluetooth isn't magic. It'll take some time for this tech to evolve, just like how Bluetooth 5.1 took some time. We started hearing all this hype about 5.1 back in 2018, but most of the devices got that upgrade in 2020. And if Android 13 decides to include it, the future versions will improve upon it even further. And that's pretty exciting. But anyway, those were the main features that Android 13 Tiramisu may have in store for us. There are some UI tweaks as well, but I don't think I'm gonna talk about it because, you know, every company will stick their own skin on top, so it'll change a little bit from one phone to another. And that's why Android is so exciting to me. Even though the base operating system is the same, the UI on top can be completely different and can have a bunch of new features on its own. I'll share more updates on Android 13 when I get them, and in the meanwhile, if you're an Android customization enthusiast like me, here are some great launchers I've covered. Take a look. We can always talk more about stuff like this on our Discord, link is in the description.